They hit me in the head multiple times for about a minute or two. Because of my head injury, I woke up very confused. And so I was just touching around and I felt my head and it felt like it had scars. And I asked my parents to check and they said it's just dried up blood. And so because of them, I have four big scars all over my head. And that's why I ended up growing out the top of my hair because I didn't want to see all the scars. But the only one that shows is the one that's on the side of my head. Real quick before I continue, I'd like to thank Paralyzed Star for subscribing. So in the beginning, things was very foggy to me. And I forgot a lot of stuff and it took me a while to relearn some things. And back then I talked slow and I stuttered a lot and also I had personality change. I'll be talking normal and then all of a sudden I'll be talking like a kid and because of my slow speaking people describe me as a stroke patient so when i was in therapy i had to take like some kind of occupational therapy to help with my coordination and speak and it took me about two years to learn at least to talk normally because back then i only make noise gesture like yes no hungry like a baby would but having tbi didn't only affect my speech but also my hearing what i mean about that is my hearing is very sensitive it was very severe where i had to get a test and the doctor says my hearing's as sensitive as a baby so loud tv is going to the movie theater loud car music people on speakerphone people speaking and then also little kids when they talk because they're very loud when they talk All those hurt my ears. Let me tell you a little story how good my hearing is. At Thanksgiving, we have family over, and so my baby sister was sleeping, but when she woke up, she was crying. Nobody heard her crying, so I was trying to tell my dad that the baby woke up. And this was while everybody was talking and eating at the table. And so they stopped talking to listen to see if she was crying. And when they heard her crying, they're like, wow, you have supersonic hearing. And they were telling me that I'm like the new baby sitter now. And to show you how good my hearing was, she was sleeping on the other side of the house. And also, she's very quiet when she cries. So because of my sense of hearing, when things get very loud for me, I always had to cover up my ears because it hurts. And having sense of hearing is just something I'm always going to be living with. So if anything, I should be wearing earmuffs because I don't know when things are going to get loud. And speaking of earmuffs, I have a pair buddy from the YouTube channel Living Differently that wears earmuffs. Hi, my name is Matthew, Living Differently here, and I actually had TLN actually reach out to me. We actually got in good with each other, and he asked some questions for me, and so here I am looking to go ahead and answer these questions pretty much efficiently, quickly as possible, because that's his format. That's pretty much what I'm trying to do without over speaking. So one of the points with the earmuffs and that I have, why I wear them. So four years ago, actually in fact five years ago, I started having neural problems at the age of 31 and pretty much no one was able to actually explain to me why I was having these neural problems other than they told me that I was psych. I went along with the probe, but it actually turns out that a year later, after I started to lose the use of my legs, that's the reason why I'm actually in the wheelchair is because I actually progressively became paralyzed because of gluten. I actually have nerve damage from gluten. It actually caused a steady decline of my neural health, and pretty much if you don't catch it in time, it's pretty much permanent, so that's the reason why. And I started actually discovering more and more that my seizures started to actually go down, and my neural problems started to go down when I actually put in these ear plugs and that's the reason why I wear earmuffs because over time I actually started to have ear infections and ear sores so which one are you gonna have? Ear sores and infections or seizures and problems and probably end up becoming quadriplegic all because you know you have brain damage. So I wore them and it was great and later on I found out that even louder environments like theaters uh, became really problematic for me so one day I ate a praying and praying out to God and God flowed through me and he actually helped me discover Ever earmuffs. So I actually wear, in fact, ear plugs and earmuffs. So I wear earmuffs pretty much, pretty much deaf. <laughs> I don't like the idea, but it's better than seizures, it's better than becoming quad, better than having all kinds of issues. So yeah, that's pretty much why I actually wear these to prevent seizures. And when it comes down to seizures, it's sass living crap out of me. I heard all the time, I'm worn out. If I don't wear the earplugs and I don't wear the earmuffs, I'm pretty much gonna have seizures. And I had five seizures in an hour. So that can pretty much tell you that earplugs and earmuffs are my lifeline. And what people do, and if they're strangers, I try to tell them like, hey, you know, I'm fine pretty much. Just keep me upright. Don't let me fall over. Don't let me hit myself. Don't let me tense up. Just, you know, hold me back and I'll be fine. It sucks, but that's the way it works. And I also do lose speech. I also lose speech because of my brain activity, bad computation, you know, the circuitry. And so what happens is that when I actually you know, lose my speech, I just, you know, I go to my happy place. I go to my happy place, I calm down, you know, and I close my eyes and I just rub. And when I speak, I don't speak so fast. I don't try to like force it. I just say moment, it's more of like mo-ment. So I pause myself, I do syllables, and pretty much that's how it works. And pretty much within like a minute or two, I'm back to normal and I'm a little bit more right. Is my neuro health gonna actually get worse? It probably will and you know, maybe around 45, 50, maybe even 60, who knows? All that I know is I work out, I'm a mechanic, I diagnose, I do whatever I can to possibly live a better, healthy, happy life. Now when I pass away, I pass away on the good note, not on the bad note. You know, I don't know what's gonna happen in the afterlife, and I don't know what you know what 
it's going to be happening. But I would always want to believe that God puts me at my best self. That's, that's pretty much why I wear earplugs, and that's the reason why I wear earplugs. It's to prevent me from having seizures. It's to prevent from anything happening to me. It's already hard emotionally and hard for T11 to be a paraplegic. It's hard for me to be a paraplegic and pretty much know we're going to be confined to a wheelchair for the rest of our lives. So that's the best of what I would make of it. So anyway, back to you T11 and thanks for letting me share. Honestly, his video really touched me and I wish the best for him. If you want to check out his channel, I'll be leaving a link in the comments. I really understand what he was talking about with the computations and circuitry in the brain. Because even though three and a half years has passed since they beat and shot me, I'm always going to have memory problems and then also I'm always going to be sensitive to sound. And because my memory is bad, whenever I go to the hospital, I had to tell the doctors and nurses to don't tell me anything and to tell my parents. And they're confused about that. They're like, are you over 18, right? The answer to that is yes, I'm almost 25 on May 13th. And the reason why they had to tell my parents and not me is because I cannot retain information. They'll be telling me what's making me sick or like, what kind of surgery I need to be getting. And it pretty much goes in one ear and out the other. Because when my dad asks what they said, I'll be like, I don't know, I don't remember. And because of TPI, I have trouble trying to interpret things and try to re-explain things to my parents. Because it seems like I cannot find the right words. And even if I'm talking to somebody, I'll forget what I'm saying and just blink out. And blinking out is when you have foggy memory. And that's why I don't like to go live because I blink out and I forget what I'm saying. And so before I do a YouTube video, I gotta write a script, which is pretty much like bullet point notes. And then when I'm editing, I'll cut out the parts where I blink out. And I also cut out the part where I have trouble speaking. What I mean by having trouble speaking is it seems like I have a cotton mouth and it's hard for me to put out my words because it seems my tongue get all twisted up and it's hard for me to pronounce certain words. And if you wait till the end of the video, I'll be showing you some bloopers of what's it like to have TBI. So because I have trouble remembering things, I forget if I cath or if I took my meds. And it could be serious because I could overdose. If I'm not sure if I cath, I'll just cath again and I could get a UTI. My memory is very bad where if we talked last week, I need a refresher because I forgot what we're talking about. And because I do YouTube and TikTok, I get messages all the time where I can't remember every message and so I get people mixed up. And so it's hard to keep track of every conversation I have with somebody because I get them mixed Stuff. But the only good thing about having TPI, I guess, is to rewatch a movie or TV show as if it was the first time. But sometimes it does make me sad that I cannot remember things. And it's because of those people that beat and shot me. If you want to know a little bit more about my story, you can check out my three year anniversary at the end of this video. But anyway, sometimes I worry about when I get older. Like, will I forget my brothers and sisters and then also my parents and also what their names are? I just wish I could forget that day I was shot and then also all the things they did to me. Because now I live for the rest of my life with PTSD, along with memory problems and sensitive ears. And even though I want to forget what happened that day, this wheelchair and also the scar on the side of my head is a daily reminder on what they did to me. I'm just trying to make the best of my life with what I have left. And because of my injury, like I'll be talking, then I'll forget what I'm talking about. What was I saying? On this channel, once a week, I give a shout out to a new subscriber. If you like, get a shout out. But if you didn't get a shout out, but would like to give a shout out, I also do shout outs for those who donate, those who give me beer ideas. And then also, I do shout outs for shout outs. In this video, on this channel, um, in this video, I'll be, <laughs> hold on. In this video, I'll be telling you guys why I like to bring extra supplies when I go to the hospital. So anyways, so, I, so without more time wasted, let's begin. So I'm going to get my notes from my laptop. Being in the hospital, yes, I like to bring my extra, my medications, but when you go to the hospital, you cannot, when you get, uh, when you when you sign in, like, you know, you have your bed or whatever, I forgot what it's called, when, uh, uh, anyways, when you when you get a, your, your own bed or room or whatever in the hospital, you cannot bring your own medications. Lay on my side, go on my bed. And I don't need to like lay on my side or something. What the? Yes, there's a ghost in here. And if you wait till the end of the video, I'll be showing you, I'll be showing you some bloopers of what's like to have TPI. 